Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Daniel. I am the uh, Director of Advisory Services at IOActive. And uh, I want to talk today about web testing methodologies. So who here has uh, either done web pen testing or uh, managed web, pe web uh, pen testers? Some combination thereof. Um, so let me ask you this, have you ever given the same app to the to different web testers? Um, has anyone ever got back the exact same results? How about, how about similar results? Sometimes similar results, hopefully similar, but it's hard to get the same results because uh, people have different methodologies. So I'm gonna jump through a few concepts uh, that sort of jump around through security, but um, we'll come back to methodology. So anyone familiar with Gunnar Pedersen? Really smart guy. He um, says, I, I used to think we had security problems and then figured out how to integrate the security solution. But security basics basically are already handled and it's the integration that's the problem. So basically, we don't have a problem with integration requirements. We have an integration problem with security requirements. I thought this was really smart. So it's not that web testers or security testers don't know what to do oftentimes. It's oftentimes that the, the methodology and the steps that they're going through as part of whatever company process they have is simply in motion. And it's hard to take what you know about security and integrate it into that. So my, my take on this is sort of a simplification, which is security is an integration problem. It's not that we don't know what to do, it's just we don't know how to integrate what we know or what we learn um, into what we're doing. So short version, security is an integration problem. So next concept is uh, two different ways to learn. I, I did a, a little essay about this recently. So basically two different ways to learn, one being osmotic, which is um, actually the word for relating to osmosis, which is just sort of absorbing, and then algorithmic. So osmotic learning is basically when you consume a, a video or a talk or a book, whatever it is, about say testing SAP, right? So you're, you're consuming this content right? You're presumably not falling asleep. You're mostly paying attention to what you're reading or seeing. And a few times throughout, whether it's a talk or a presentation, you kind of say to yourself, hmm, that's kind of interesting. And maybe one step further, you might actually jot something down about it, right? But then, whatever, a week later, six months later, you're testing SAP. And the only thing you can remember is that you should be remembering something. Right? You remember, oh, I saw a talk or I read that book. And there was a bunch of cool steps, but I don't remember what they are. So that's one way to approach things, which is how I've been doing it most of my life. And then you have algorithmic learning, which, um, which is basically you define that you care about SAP testing a lot. That's the first thing you sort of just declare. And then you build an algorithm for testing SAP. You do this in notes or GitHub or whatever, and you keep track of what your exact steps are. And then you go about learning more about it, however you do that, talks, videos, whatever. And when you learn something new, you actively, right then and there, you update your system for doing it, right? So you're changing your algorithm based on new inputs, which means you're not trusting osmosis to work for you six months in the future. So I've been doing this uh, in a number of different ways um, on the personal side as well as professional, but I've got like bucket list, bug out bag, daily routine. This is a really big one. You read like a story on New York, New York Times or something that says, you know, must go to bed, whatever, before 5 p.m. And if you think that's a good enough step, this is the challenge for everything you learn. Is this thing good enough for me to change my daily methodology? If not, then you just know to discard it. 
And you could do it for all sorts of things, including testing SAP or any kind of web app. So that's that concept, algorithmic versus osmosis-based learning. So the next problem is uh, web methodologies, all the traditional ones, are, they're large, they're very large. And so if you're managing web testers or you're testing apps yourself, and um, you open up one of these things, and I looked at a bunch of them, again, just, just for this, got one at 200 pages. And it, it just seems like you're giving the tester more work, and it's very opaque, it's hard for them to get through. The stuff is excellent, and as you pick through it, it's great content, but it's just so hard to get through. sort of produces this, uh, this feeling that you see on the right. Anyone recognize this person? Imagine a lot of people do, okay. So next pro uh, problem is web methodologies don't have context, right? You, a web methodology doesn't know what you are testing. It doesn't know if you're testing WordPress or Nginx or SAP or Apache or whatever. It's just giving you exactly what it's going to give you with no modifications. Web methodologies also don't know how big your problems are. They don't know what you're facing at the moment, right? Um, sometimes you might get a, a crazy request from a boss. A customer wants you to find everything you can. You have 13 minutes. Um, it's, it's hard to test in that amount of time, and your web methodology presents all 200 pages despite the challenge that you're facing. Methodologies are also uh, hard to update, um, especially the big ones and, and the really good ones. Um, they tend to be by committee, right? You have a whole bunch of people get together in a room every six months or six years or whenever it happens. And, uh, you know, ratification and yes and no and fight about it on mailing lists for quite about, uh, some time. And you end up with an update, but uh, it, it's, it's difficult to, to get the updates in. It's difficult to submit input to get it added in a lot of cases. Um, and the updates don't come very often. So integration, different type of learning, monolithic, context sensitive, um, understanding how much time you have, and difficult to update. So that's kind of what we're talking about here. So what I put together is basically an attempt, an early attempt, at trying to uh, solve the problem through, through technology. So I want to start first with the methodology that's, that's used. So the methodology is held in a GitHub repo, which is uh, located here, and the link will be later as well. But uh, it starts with a, a good foundation of methodologies that uh, that I've used over the years, uh, for probably about 10 years. So Web Application Hacker's Handbook, everyone familiar with this? I imagine at an OWASP conference, it's pretty common. So this one is excellent. It's probably the, the deepest foundation of methodologies that I like to use, it's sort of the most of the content is uh, based on this stuff. ASVS, have you guys used this methodology or this project? It's an OWASP project. It's phenomenal. So basically, you see these three columns. Those are the levels of the app that you need to deal with. So basically, one is you don't even care that much about it, pretty low risk, um, not much data in it. Two is the middle, and blue is the most important. And it gives you prescriptive checks on what to look for. It's a great project. Uh, so that's another source of methodology. The OWASP testing guide, this is um, a great, great resource. It's uh, pretty large, but very detailed. So also a good, good source of methodology. Then there's this guy sitting over there. So uh, the Bug Hunter methodology by, by Jason Haddix, um, he did a series of talks on this in 2015. And uh, coming at it from a Bug Hunter's pr pr uh, perspective, because he works at Bug Crowd, and uh, yeah, so all these are basically a good foundation on top of which to build a methodology. So the core concepts of this um, adaptive 
testing methodology concept are having steps in the methodology that are very crisp, that are efficient, and you kind of always want to have. You don't want to have too much extra. Willingness to use other tools. So the web methodology approach here is to have not just web tools in there, but also network-based tools, um, a lot of OSINT-based tools, um, because you can just gather lots of information from existing resources and bring it in. Flexibility based on conditions. This is another big thing that um, I'm trying to build it around. Transparency. This one is a big one. Text files, um, open source, visibility into how everything works, right? That's a big one. Um, so now I want to sort of talk about the structure of the methodologies. So this is what they look like. Um, like I said, they are text files. And what it does is it basically um, combines inside of a single check a technology that the check applies to combined with time frames that each rule is associated with. So basically each rule is defined as being is this a 30 minute check? Like if I'm testing a web app in 30 minutes, which we've all had to do, um, if I only have 30 minutes, what checks should I run, right? And combine that with what technologies are I, am I actually running against? So each rule is defined according to technical stack and time. And they're all sitting in GitHub. So this is kind of the structure. So this, uh, the technology comes first. So in this case, it's a universal technology, which means this rule applies to any technology that you're testing. Um, so some examples, it's an Apache rule. It's a WordPress rule, right? And you see that, that you have times there as well, and then you have the, the text for the check. So that's technology. Then you have time. So, uh, 30 minutes, one hour, one day, two days, and unlimited. And these I'm messing with, and I would love to hear feedback on, are these too small, too large, whatever. But the idea is someone could come to you and say, maybe it's a friend that says, I'm about to go live in 45 minutes. I don't have any money. Can you please look and see if my side is broken? Um, of course, the answer there is you're going live anyway. Why are you asking me? But at least you would know what to look for in 30 minutes um, to help them out. So it could be a day, could be unlimited. So basically, all other methodologies that, that, um, that we want to make up additional checks or existing methodology checks that we like, we could bring over. And if they're really, really deep, we add them to the unlimited. Right? So that just means if you have unlimited time, the methodology will get very large. So how does it work? So basically, this is a service. It runs. It's on the internet. The client makes a request to the ATM service. You send two things. You send domain and you send time scope. And the ATM service checks the stack of the site in question. Um, it's very non-intrusive. Just looks like a, it's a web query, basically. Um, the service receives the stack information. We parse the current methodology um, that matches the stack and time combination. And then we give the results back to the client. It's, it's that simple. So send the domain and time to ATM. ATM checks the stack. ATM parses the checks and then returns the checks to the client. And now, now we try and do demos. Yes. So first, um, first I want to show what it looks like on the command line. Um, don't know if I have an internet connection because that is constricted. One way to find out. All right, so this is the script that is behind the scenes doing just the stack analysis. 
Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I, I was on earlier. I, I think I'm just going to switch to my own uh, my own connection. All right. So, yeah, this is actually what the site is running. Um, I've got a disclaimer here at the bottom that basically says it is easy to fool this because we are basically looking at at header content. The idea is to have a free service that replaces it doesn't replace, but it's a free alternative to things like built with, which um, can charge pretty serious amount of money if you query it a lot. Um, and now you can see under the covers um, what we're actually doing, which when you look at it, you're going to be like, wow, that's super easy. Um, I don't know why the service didn't already exist for free um, that you can just query whenever you want. So. Um, you could look for all sorts of things, WordPress admin, um, but here are the check sections. So I've got like 30 or 40 checks in here, Joomla, Apache, Nginx, IIS, TLS tells you if it's SSL side or not, lots of different identification of platform. A lot of these are headers, but they don't have to be headers. They can also be, um, requests for files that exist in certain locations, readme's, uh, slash administrator, um, certain JavaScript files for like Joomla or whatever. Um, and so here's what it looks like in the browser, if it works. Takes a couple seconds, which I'm speeding up right now. And there you go. WordPress is running these things. So TLS. So this is an example of where the dynamic methodology is useful. You could have a whole bunch of checks that you run against TLS, but you only run them if the site is TLS, right? Same with WordPress. You can spawn off, and the methodology already has it in it where if it's WordPress, that's going to spawn off CMS map, WP scan, whatever. So you can sort of branch out. But if none of this stuff is there, the methodology is much smaller. So um, this is what ATM or uh, the, the project, adaptive testing methodology, is calling. It's calling this first. So, um, so this is what ATM looks like. So it's a similar sort of interface, except for here we have the, the, um, the marker for time limit. So we're going to say, we don't have any time. I've just got to get the most important stuff. Find me a methodology. Hopefully this works. Pretty sure it will. And this is basically the steps, right? Enter the domain you want to test. Determine how long you have. Found the same technologies. And now it's telling us what checks to run against that site. And here's a look at some of the methodology. So um, for 30 minutes, you have to really trim down. And that's where it comes down to uh, determining what checks run at what times, right? And this, this is where the methodology, uh, methodology gets really interesting because when you come up with a new check that you find, you know, you're in some talk next door and they say, oh, you should definitely check for this. You know, it's this cool new vol and you need to check for it. When you go to add it, where do you add it in the methodology? Does it apply to one technology or another? And at what time limit do you add it? So that's what happens. So you get 30, um, 39 checks here. We're going to change this up to four hours. 
which is a lot more like a regular test, although a good test, of course, is one or two weeks. And we should get more than 39 checks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So right now what it's doing is it is, um, so we went from 39 to 104. So those checks will still exist. You will just get a deeper checks in yeah, addition. In yeah, yeah. Like the download and update, uh, does it do more rigorous checks on a four hour or four day versus a 30 day? It does, it does, it does deeper checks. That's exactly what it's doing. So basically you could have one check for 30 minutes, it's looking at the same content, but it's saying, um, for example, uh, uh, Jason and I man manage a bunch of uh, security lists, like discovery lists. Well, one list um, that I have in the 30 minute window looks for only a thousand of the top directories. And then as we go up to more and more time, we're, we're looking for 10,000 or 100,000 directories. So it is scaling based on how much time that you have. Does it also change the vector or is it just the depth of the No, it's the depth of the testing. It also adds additional checks. So for example, in the automation section, uh, in 30 minutes, um, it only has you doing a burp scan, uh, a burp automated. And then as you go longer time frames, it's saying add this tool, add this tool, you know, add in number of tools that you have up to your max because you have the extra time. Um, all right, so now what I wanna do is, um, so this is the other point about this. This is about web methodology, but I didn't put web in the uh, ATM uh, name because this is not a web concept. This is an adaptive methodology concept. We should be able to say, if I want to brush up on my NetSec, which I do, um, what are the top techniques for um, getting domain admin on a network if you only have an hour, right? If you have 30 minutes, what are the top 10 things that you should do? But I don't want to write a top 10 methodology and then have this other methodology for if I have more time, I just want to have it dynamically adjust according to my situation. So um, I'm going to reach out to uh, Rob Fuller, uh, Mubix, and basically try and get him to add a bunch of rules into network. Exact same format, exact same interface. Um, I don't know crap about forensics. I'm going to have someone do it for forensics as well, right? So this is, it's a concept that applies to multiple places. Um, so going into web though, so web rules, um, it's very large display, a lot of wrap over, but you see it's just very intuitive, obvious sort of text, right? So um, if we go to the top and we say yank this and we, um, let's just say, starting at one hour, and we'll just say um, updated for OWASP, okay? And we're going to, um, we're going to push that, and we are going to, or well, we're gonna commit it first, then we're gonna push it, and then, I have to do one stupid thing, which is clean up. And now, when I run a test at the one hour mark, unless I forgot a step,
still thinking. Doesn't like do doing this over a phone network. All right, update it for OWASP. So the idea here is, is simple, right? We want to have a crowdsourced methodology handled by GitHub. All the best testers in the world, basically, can come in here and say, Switchy Sharp, that's dumb. Never use that. I hate Chrome. Use Firefox. Submit a pull request. I go in there, pull it down. It's a simple text format that everyone can read. And now this methodology grows and updates. Um, and the very next time someone executes the service, they, they get the freshest stuff. All right, so that's the idea. Contextual security testing, crowdsourced updates via GitHub. That's, that's really the key that, that I'm excited about, is having people uh, cooperate and bring the stuff together in one place which uh, doesn't have to be here, there'll be many forks, right? Um, adjust your time constraints, produces customized testing for the app. And uh, there's a bunch of stuff I wanna do with this, right? So basically improving the methodologies is one thing. Uh, right now, it, it's a decent methodology, it, it works, I, I use it already, but I've got tons more content to bring over into it. Um, another thing I wanna do is Right now, it only checks the stack from the outside with curl, right? So you're hitting the outside as an unauthenticated user with curl, and you're checking the stack. And that's fine. It works. You're reading headers, and that's fine. But what if I could be looking at burp logs in the meantime? Because after I get past login, now I see Flash, and now I see a bunch of other technologies. So that could be updated on the fly, feeding you new methodology with Ajax, basically. Um, so, um, other types of context beyond stack and time. So stack right now is, is a context that adjusts the methodology. Time is one, but there could be others that, that could adjust the methodology as well. Um, other types of testing, talked about that, network, forensics, uh, whatever. Determine the best time increments, maybe 30 minutes, one hour, a day. M maybe those aren't the best, I could tweak those. Um, and performance of the stack detection and basically in a multi-thread that. And then um, the, the, the idea that I like the most about it is creating this as a public service where it's just out there on the internet. And you can have any client and even any methodology. So you can have another pull down that points to a fork of the methodology that you like better. And um, I've already got code out there that will call it and interact with it um, in real time. Um, oh, that's one other thing I wanna show. So, there's also this. So, so you can query directly by domain so you can actually put the domain in the URL and query that way and get the result back. I mean, I'm trying to make it super easy to scrape and use. Um, so that's just a regular web response. So this particular site was Express and Node. Um, but here's another one. So you can also get it back in JSON. So any client can use it from anywhere. So um, trying to figure, I, I made a bunch of domains. I actually just recently moved it to my domain like a couple of days ago, but I, I made it some other domains in case it was just a public service out there. Not too excited about the domains, but um, the other thing I wanted to do is turn this into a local implementation that can be used inside of products themselves, right? Because I don't like the idea, if I'm running whatever product, I don't like the idea of anyone who tests a site using my product is calling some service which receives the domain and whatever parameters. It's like that's leakage that the site is being tested, plus it'll have an IP. So you gotta have some sort of local option. Um, and that 
brings a cool announcement. So um, looks like this will be built into Burp very soon. So basically, um, I was talking to Daff while building this, and he is looking to add methodology uh, support into it. And he's basically excited about the notion of having uh, the methodology be adjusted based on what you're testing, right? And we haven't worked out exactly how the service will work, where it will live, but I, we're definitely going to address the issue that we don't want leakage coming out of Burp going to some service that um, maybe a service that he controls, similar to Collaborator, but but um, that's pretty much it. I want to say thanks to uh, Daff for for uh, looking at this, um, OWASP, Jason, IOActive, and uh, that's it. How about you take any questions? In the data format file for the web checks, yep. um, two questions. One, why didn't you just specify how long the check takes or what tests are included in rather than having like eight common element fields for all the different specific time frames that it should be true? Um, Uh, I think it's because the implementation is just that much easier when you, it, it makes the check a little bit more ugly, but it, it's basically a grep statement that does this. Um, and it's, it's just really easy to, to build the checks in this way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about that already. Is having like a wiki article for each. Um, yeah, and that, that's that's no problem to have. Yeah. You mentioned that you were going to be looking at trying to bring people in that do things that you're not good at. <clears throat> How are you going to account for the personal pre uh, like prejudices of that person? Say, like you mentioned, I like Firefox. I don't like Chrome texting. When you go to publish that out, how are you going to account for that? Uh, first, I'll just say in the beginning that um, there will be bias for whatever reason. There's already bias in it because of me. Um, but there will be bias. But if you just use, uh, this is going to sound dumb, but if you just use people who are well-known as being decent in the, in the industry, and then um, you get people like in the room say, hey, do you want to help moderate or whatever? And you could just say, hey, you know, I don't know, this he works for the company and he's pitching that he wants this in the, in the thing and maybe it's super obvious. Other than that, I feel like we don't want to add too much friction to stuff going in. But I think if you just have a, a, a few decent people who are helping curate and you have good people with right access, it should work itself out. But it, it's a good concern to think about. Uh, I would say mostly open source. A lot of Recon NG, a um, lot of a lot of Burp, which is not open source, but I consider it open source because it's three hundred bucks. Um, but yeah, so it, there's no other named commercial scanners because they're so expensive. But I say next end scanner, next end scanner. So. Um, oh, dude, that's a sick idea. That is a super sick idea. So, yeah, this is one thing I'm worried about is the data format. Um, but that that seems like a really cool tag. Like, you cl click the don't have money. Like, what I like, ab like about the interface, right? What I like about the interface is you just click all your contexts. And like I said, there's only two contexts right now, but that's that's another context. Don't have money. Boom. Now all the commercial scanner stuff is gone. Great idea. It's, uh, no, it's just a uh, text file. It's in, okay. they're MD files. So I'll just. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it is taken into account in the order. So the order that it's in the methodology is the order that it spits out, notwithstanding if context pulled any steps out. But... Um, Sure, right. It would be like if account locked out and methodology or something. Yeah, no, it's a good point. Yeah. Seems like a great way to organize obviously the workflow of like step to test. How about um, thinking of ways to organize the output of each step also? Like, so, like, run and mapping output, maybe having to do the way like say that in the same directory structure, but the inputs are coming in from the No, it's a really good point um, because some is in map. Some is just a random web check, which is the results are going to be in burp. But others are recon ng, which are capturing a state file, which are adding up. And the idea, yeah, ultimately, we like to be pointing everything to one place. Um, it's, a, it's a good point. I don't know how to solve that, um, but it's, it's a good thing. To, yeah. Are you writing the, the methodology like steps in like the dash hash steps? Yes, it's, yeah, go do this. Um, the, the contexts are a little bit mixed right now where I, some are like commands like go do this and some are like, and this is just cleanup I have to do. Some are um, failed to um, make response identical or something like that. So some checks are the answer that's broken and some are go do this. So, but that's because uh, um, some are mixed from ASVS, others are mixed from other sources. Yep. So um, when you started, you kind of asked, you know, do two tests of every three say you're relevant? Yep. This is not to address that problem, right? Because people who follow the methodology will still use different tests. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely wasn't supposed to ask that. Um, check did not evidently get to you. Um, okay. Oh, that's sick. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. So I'm actually looking for a bunch of these more contexts that are radio buttons or, or whatever, check boxes. Um, yeah, compliance. That's phenomenal. Basically, activate all the six five yeah. checks. Yeah. Um, yeah, totally. Anything else? All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you.